Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to our part three series on Substance Painter on Glass Hand. So today we're actually going to jump into Substance Painter. I'm going to show you a little bit about the software and ease you guys into it if you haven't used it before. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out Substance Painter 2.1.0. Okay, so you can see here on the top bar, um, one of the things that I really like about Algorithmic is that they allow you to rent the software. So if you're just learning it or maybe you're trying to figure out if it's going to work in your pipeline, you can actually rent it for um, a whole month and you know pay the, I, I believe it's $20 to actually use the software. Um, so definitely check out the site and check out what they have to offer because it's really cool. And I love when, um, when software developers are flexible. So if you go to File and then New, this is what, how we're going to set up our project. And we want to make sure that we're using the metal rough high quality. Um, I always select this guy first off. And then we need to select the mesh for the project. Okay, So we're going to use our helmet. So let's go ahead and go to our Stormtrooper helmet. And let's open that. I'm going to go ahead and change our normal map format to OpenGL. I find that this works a lot better with Octane and Cinema 4D. And let's go ahead and change it to 4K. And uh, we should be good at this point. Uh, if we wanted to add the maps here, we can. Um, but that will add that into our textures palette. Anyways, let's go ahead and hit OK. And you can see that our model is brought into Substance Painter. And this is our 3D painting view our 2D view, as you can see, and we can switch these uh, by going up to here to the button on the very top toolbar and saying 3D, 2D, uh, 3D only, or 2D only. So you have the option. I like to have the 3D and 2D up at the same time. It gives me a little bit more um, legibility on what I'm doing and how things are being painted across the model. So I enjoy having those both up at the same time. Let's go over here. This is our layers palette. So we're going to be able to, you know, add certain layers, add masks, and start to add different generators and all kinds of really cool stuff that is unique to Substance Painter. So that's where we're, we're going to spend a lot of time here in the layers palette. This is our texture set list, of course. Um, this is actually just our model um, that is in our view. And if we come down here, this is going to be our properties for our paint. So size, flow, spacing, everything that you would uh, be accustomed to in a texture painting software for the brush will be shown down here. Okay, so, and as we go down towards this section, let's just focus on this material right here. This is what makes Substance Designer, or I'm sorry, Substance Painter, I feel like I'm gonna do that a lot in this tutorial. Uh, that's what makes Substance Painter so nice, is that you can paint across all these channels at once. Um, so if this certain layer that we have selected only needs to be the color channel, then we can deselect these buttons and just paint with color. So we have so many options um, down here. And you can, of course, add and subtract these as you're going along. So um, really nice and really flexible. Um, we have the texture set settings here. This is going to be, uh, of course, like our channels that are appearing in our metallic roughness. Uh, PBR workflow. If you want to learn more about the PBR workflow, we're going to leave a link in the description for you guys um, that has some really awesome ebooks that Algorithmic has put together. So definitely check those out um, if you're not familiar with uh, PBR workflows. And then we actually have uh, additional maps where we can bake the textures and then select those that we had done um, in Substance Designer. So let's go ahead and get those out that we have. Uh, we know that we're going to be using uh, the world space normal maps and you can see that it brings up uh, our texture panel for us to choose from. Okay, So if you look at the texture slot over here um, there's a lot of really nice preset kind of textures. Let's go ahead and add some more textures into our project. Um, the easiest way we can do that is just go into our um, our mesh data folder and we're actually going to bring out all the stuff that we had brought from Substance Designer and baked into our project. So let's say that we are going to import this to our project. And as we do so, they pop up in our texture palette and we can begin to select those here in our list. Okay, so our world space normal map is going to be 
Let's see. I'm going to actually turn on our preview over here so I can see exactly what those are. So it looks like our world space normal is going to be, and I'm looking at the thumbnail on my screen, it's going to be this guy. Um, and there we go. So no big deal if you put the wrong one in there. You can hit the X and select the other one that you need. Let's go ahead and select our color ID map, our ambient occlusion map, which is going to be located down here. And you can see it actually pops it in right away as we're using these. Uh, our curvature map, which is found right here. Our position map, which is going to be this guy. And I think that's going to be okay for us. Um, it's really nice to be able to select the normal map. So like I said before in, in the last lesson, let's say you're working on a game asset and you have a high resolution mesh that you've uh, sculpted inside a ZBrush or Cinema 4D and you want to bake that onto the low resolution. You can do that inside a Substance Designer and then while you're painting on the low resolution model, you can select the normal map so you have all that nice detail coming back from the high resolution sculpt. Um, so you can actually see that in the viewport. The thickness map is used for um, maybe something that's trying to illustrate a little bit of subsurface scattering. Again, this map can be um, made inside of Substance Designer and you can load that in here. Okay, so uh, let's look at our base color. We have RGB 16 bit. That's good. We have our height, which is a linear 32 float, um, linear 8 bit, linear 8 bit for the uh, roughness and metallic, which is great and then RGB 16 float for our normal map. And of course you can change those as you see fit, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and run through what those acronyms are. Okay, so let's move our way around the uh, UI. We have the materials section. Um, this is really nice. We can begin painting with these materials with our standard paintbrush. So we can actually double click and select these guys. Uh, let's go ahead and do so. And you can see that it loads it up into our paintbrush. Um, the way that we can scale our brush in the viewport is holding control and left clicking and dragging. I'm sorry, that will actually adjust our flow as you can see on our properties. So control left click is flow. Control right click is our size. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and start to paint a little bit on the model. And you can see that it's painting across the color um, roughness and metal just from the preview here. We don't have a stencil and we're using just a regular alpha brush, okay? I'm sorry, just a regular alpha, alpha and the normal brush. So um, that's gonna be the actual material section. So let's just back up to where I don't have anything painted. And then we have our smart materials. So the smart materials are really cool. You can actually drag and drop these into your layer stack and you will see that it will come in as a folder uh, and we can create these smart materials on the fly and save them for later. So um, this is just a folder set. If we were to actually, for example, let's create a folder and then let's put some layers into it. So let's actually go and add just a normal layer. Uh, for example's sake, you can have painted objects um, here on this layer and you can actually right click and then say create smart material and name that and actually save it below. So that's a really awesome feature. So you can um, throw these in and reuse them and see the history and change whatever you would like with the smart material. So those are really nice, really handy. Um, and then we also have the smart masks and we can drag these onto our layers and get some really cool grungy type of effects and weathering effects and get some really awesome looks created super fast. Um, Let's go ahead and move over to our brushes. Uh, of course, this is just going to be some different brushes for you to look at and choose from. Uh, the particle brushes we'll definitely take a look at too. Uh, these can simulate some different uh, weathering effects, um, some veins, and you can see some puddles, some really cool stuff. Um, and then our tools. We can blur, uh, we can add some bullet impacts, and they have some nice fur and things that we can add to our model. So we'll definitely check these out. And then you can see over here on the furthest most uh, panel that we're going to be using alphas. So this is where you can load those into, uh, into your brushes. Procedural maps, uh, which are similar to the ones in Substance Designer that we can use uh, to create some really procedural uh, noise for roughness or what, what have you. So the generators, um, we can use these a lot. 
inside of our smart materials. Textures, as we explained before, is where all the bitmaps are going to be loaded into. Filters, uh, these are going to be like different effects on our images that we're going to be bringing in. So uh, we could like blur our um, different layers that we paint on. Uh, we'll take a look at this. It's easier to see when it's uh, in examples and environments. So we can d load in different environments, um, just clicking and dragging them into the scene. And then we can also uh, hold shift and right click to change the lighting. Okay. So we can use these to light our scenes uh, differently. And then we have shaders, uh, which we are using the PBR uh, metallic roughness, and then different types of particles for our particle brushes. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at all this stuff. I just wanted to run this, uh, run through the software with you guys today and check it out. So we're going to be wrapping this one up. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to start uh, painting on our model and talking about how we can use a layer system to get some really unique uh, looks out of this Stormtrooper helmet. And we're going to begin to continue to work with this guy. So uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for uh, checking this video out. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like. We really appreciate all the awesome feedback, and we hope you guys check out the next tutorial. So thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.